and say the Lord is good. Come and say the Lord is good. There is nothing he cannot do. Come and say the Lord is good. Come and see the Lord. Come and see the Lord is good. Everybody see. Come and see the Lord is good. There is nothing. There is nothing. Praise the Lord Jesus. I've entitled this message, Be Led by the Holy Spirit. I was in a restaurant one day when a lady approached me, and I remember the circumstances leading up to her approach, but I know that when we were talking, she told me during the course of our conversation that she was a prostitute. Well, as we talked further, I noticed that she didn't have any remorse about being a prostitute, no regret, no apparent regret rather. And uh, she seemed to be uh, like she was of the impression that God was in agreement with what she does. Well, I was considering her one day and in the conversation that we had during this consideration, I asked her, I said, do you are you of the opinion that that you are being led by the Holy Spirit of God? And she said, well, what do you what do you think I do? And I told her, I said, well, I only know what you told me you do. You told me you was a prostitute. And do you think that you are being led or is it your opinion that the Holy Spirit of God is leading you to be a prostitute? She said to me, well, I don't know uh, what you're talking about, but I know that God no understand. He understands that I need things and I got to have them and I'm going to get them and I'm going to use what I got to get them. I said, but you know, I'm not trying to tell you whether that's right or wrong. My question was simply, do you believe that you are being led by the Spirit of God to do what you do? If you was a bricklayer, I, I would ask you the same question. If you was a doctor or if you was a lawyer or if you was a homeless person, I ask you the same question. Do you believe that the Holy Spirit of God is 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 the one leading you to do what you do? Because I'm telling you the only way that you're going to find the full satisfaction that is the permanent satisfaction that only can come from your maker who is being satisfied with you is if you're being led by the spirit of your maker. At that point she said, well yeah, I, I, I'll be talking to you at another time because uh, I, I, I got something I got to go and do. And we departed going in two different directions. I've entitled this message, Be Led by the Holy Spirit. And I'm saying be led by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the power of your maker. Now God is our maker, but he makes us by his word. The Spirit says that in the beginning, that God was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. By him all things are made, and without him not anything was made that has been made. That's in uh, St. John chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2. Correction, that's St. John chapter 1 verses 1 through 3. I was paraphrasing it from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. But the word is how our maker, who is God, makes us. He makes us by his word. He makes everything by his word. But now his word became flesh as the Holy Spirit continues in verse 14 of John chapter 1 and says, he says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So we know that the word became flesh and we later on learned that the word, the name of the flesh that the word became 
is Jesus. God gave him that name. So our maker is God who makes all things by his word and his word is Jesus and the power of Jesus is the one who actually does the leg work. So that the power of Jesus or the spirit of Jesus is the one that is we are to be led by being led by the spirit of Jesus. Well, now Jesus named his spirit and named the, the power that would take his place as the Holy Spirit that the Father sends in the name of Jesus. So when we are led by the Holy Spirit, we are led by God's word, which is God's, our maker's way of making all things that he makes, you see? And so it's actually our maker who is making us when we are led by the Holy Spirit of God. Now, as we have established, Jesus is the word of God in human form. So he was the word of the maker on the earth in the days of his flesh. And he did live as a man. He died as men do die. He was buried in a grave as some men are buried in a grave. That proves that they really did because if they ain't dead when you put them in the grave, it won't be long after that they'll be dead. So Jesus died a real death, but he also is the one who rose from the dead by the glory and the power of God, never to die again. And the witnesses, the Holy Spirit tells us that the witnesses said that they saw the man, Jesus Christ, as he ascended up to heaven and then he disappeared in a cloud. So that now by faith we know that the man Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God the Father in heaven, which is the position of power and authority, and he is making intercession for the saints according to the will of God. But Jesus is not on the earth anymore. Hallelujah. At this time, while I am making this recorded message, Jesus is not on the earth. But he will come back. But in the meantime, he left his replacement as being the Holy Spirit that the Father sends in the name of Jesus. And he is the genuine replacement for the, 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 the man Jesus Christ who is the word of the maker in human form. And so the maker continues to make his human creation into the image and likeness of God by his genuine way, which is his word. And we identify that word as Jesus. And, and, and Jesus is still at work, but by his spirit, which he named as the Holy Spirit that the Father sends in the name of Jesus. The testimony of God's word is invaluable. Because the testimony of God's word is Jesus giving his word that God is promising to complete those things which he testify about. And by the power that's connected to the testimony of Jesus' words, that's how God accomplishes the completion of those things which Jesus testify that God is promising to complete. Now, Jesus talked about the everlasting power that's in his words. He said that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Hallelujah. So the testimony of God's word shall never pass away. And so because the power is forever, the power will complete everything that God testifies about by his word. Hallelujah. So then. The title is, Be Led by the Holy Spirit. Because when you are led by the Holy Spirit, it is God's word in human form that is leading you. And if God's word in human form is leading you, then God's way of making you into his image, into his likeness is leading you. And God himself is leading you because God sent his word to heal us. Hallelujah. And so the healing process is ongoing when we observe the testimony of God's 
uh, Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the power of God's word which God sent to heal us. Hallelujah. And the power of God's word is able to complete every word that is testified by God's word. And, and if you need that evidence, I ask you to turn with me over to Genesis chapter number one. And we're going to start at verse number one. I ask you to join me in reading this passage of scripture out loud. We're just going to read three verses in order to get the general idea of the testimony that the Holy Spirit has given us about the events which took place in the beginning. Now we're going to read Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through 4. And I'm going to be reading from the New International Version 2011 edition. But I'm asking you to please join me and read from your version and just read it together with me out loud. And we're going to get there uh, by, the, by the grace of God that he presents to us by the Holy Spirit. So be encouraged today. Let's begin at verse number 1 of Genesis chapter 1. It's where the Holy Spirit recorded his testimony and said, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hoovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the application of his holy word. So here we are finding that the Holy Spirit is reporting to us about the events in the beginning. And he said the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hoovering over the surface of the water. But then God said it's the same thing. as This is how God makes things. By speaking those things. And his word is the, by the way he makes all things. So he said... And God said, let there be light. In other words, the testimony of God's word was, let there be light. But then the next um, few words indicate the light occurred. And there was light. Now I believe that the Holy Spirit, which was the Spirit of God, was hoovering over the, over the waters. He was in between, let there be light and there was light. He was in, right in between that. Because as soon as God testified, that is his word, testified and said, let there be light, the Holy Spirit went out and completed the, the testimony of, of God's word because this is God making a promise when he gives his word on something. He's making a promise there. And, and, the, and the Holy Spirit is the one who completes the promise. So there was light. Why? Because the Holy Spirit went out and brought light from darkness. We can see that in the next verse where he said, God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. So the Holy Spirit actually went out and created light from the darkness. Now this same Holy Spirit which completed the, the, the maker's uh, word and the testimony of the maker's word is the same Holy Spirit that Jesus testified about before he left for heaven. In John chapter 14 and verse number 26, I paraphrase, but this is where we find the Holy Spirit recording the testimony of Jesus who said, the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance whatever things I've said unto you. And so we find the testimony of our Lord and Savior, God's maker, the word that he used to make things with. God, of course, is the maker and he makes things by his word. And his word, uh, the power of his word is the power that completes the testimony that is testified by his word. And so Jesus gives us his word that this is how he will complete his, 
his testimony is by the Holy Spirit that the Father sends in the name of Jesus. And I submit for your consideration that the Holy Spirit Jesus referred to is the same Spirit of God that he refers to here. The Holy Spirit refers to here in Genesis chapter number 1. The same Spirit of God that was hoovering over the waters. Now the testimony of the Holy Spirit is the testimony of God's word which the Holy Spirit has observed. You see, the Holy Spirit does not operate on his own, but he observes the testimony of God's word and he performs the steps necessary to complete everything that God's word testifies. So that the fulfillment of the prophecy about God is true, where it is written that the Spirit says that God cannot lie because God is the maker and he makes everything by his word and the spirit is the power that upholds the integrity of everything testified by God's word so that the testimony of God's word the completion of it is imminent because the Holy Spirit is the power that completes that testimony. But he is also the power that Jesus told us to expect to reveal that testimony, that direct, genuine testimony of God's word to us. Now, salvation is imminent for anyone who believes in the power that completes the testimony of God's word. See, the testimony of God's word was testified and we find uh, a, a, the evidence of it in Romans chapter number 9 in verse number 26 or 25 and 26. I ask you to turn with me over there and let's read that together out loud. Verse 25 is where we find the testimony of God's word that's revealed to us by the power of of God's word that is the Holy Spirit and he says here in 25 as he says in Hosea I will call them my people who are not my people and I will call her my loved one who is not my loved one and it will happen that in the very place where it was said to them you are not my people they will be called sons of the living God. Hallelujah. We are li looking at and listening to the testimony of God's word. And remember God's word is the way in which he makes everything happen. So God is the one that's making it happen. But now the power of God's word is the one that actually takes the steps necessary to complete what God said, what God says by his word, you see. In other words, the testimony of God's word. And here we have the word of the Lord as the evidence to prove that he has testified about God's promise to call people who are not even his people, his people. We have his word where he is saying he is calling his loved ones people who are not even his loved ones and we have his word that he said the in the same place where he said to these people you are not my people they will be called sons of the living God hallelujah now what does the power the power of God's word come in here see the power of God's word is already in motion Completing the testimony of God's word. It's not no coincidence. People who believe in the power that's connected to God's word. He, those are the people that are being genuinely saved by that same power. Because he's able. He's able to complete whatever God gives his word and his word testifies about. Now, God has already given his word. Now, this word didn't just come about uh, 2,000 years ago because Hosea 
was the prophet that this this portion of scripture is based on his testimony which God the Lord spoke by Hosea and that was 700 years or more uh, before Jesus came on the scene 2,000 years ago so what I'm saying is God's word has has been in place and the power which completes the testimony of God's word is still doing what God's word called for to do. See? So all we need to do is put our trust in the power to complete what God's word testified about because it's actually God promising. Hallelujah. And when we're putting our trust in God's promises, we can't fail because God cannot lie. And so if he cannot lie, he's always telling the truth. So what we're doing here is we're just trusting the power to complete what God has already said and his word testified about. And now the power of his word is completing the testimony of God's word in our lives who believe in that power. See, this is the same power that raised Jesus from death to life, never to die again. See, this is the power that we live by, or we are called to live by, I should say, because if we believe God's gospel, then we live by this power. See? Now, let's turn to looking to the testimony of the Holy Spirit to hear his testimony on the genuine gospel of Christ and what it actually does. Remember, God sent the gospel of Christ by his son, Jesus, who was the first to announce this great and wonderful salvation. The genuine gospel, however, is only preached and taught by the power of God's word, who is the Holy Spirit that Father, the Father sends in the name of Jesus. So, let's look at the written testimony of the Holy Spirit so that we can get it firsthand from the teacher and the preacher of the genuine gospel of Christ. And we look in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and we're going to look at verses 14 and 15. And again, I'm asking you to Read together with me out loud the, these two verses of scripture, no matter what version of the Bible you prefer to use. The exercise is just so that you and I can recite the word of God together out loud. So be encouraged and let's just recite uh, verses 14 and 15 of 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. And this is where the Holy Spirit says, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them and was raised again. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the application of his holy word. Now, the thing that we want to do is believe that. Because when we believe that, then we are died. We have died with Christ. But we don't stay dead because that same gospel makes us alive also. And for that evidence, turn with me over to Romans chapter 6. And here we're going to read the testimony of, Holy, of the Holy Spirit from verses 1 through 7. Okay, this is the testimony of the Holy Spirit about our death, our burial, and our resurrection when Jesus died and was buried and was resurrected. Okay? Be beginning at verse number one, the Holy Spirit testifies and says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death 
in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Let's go on and read 8 and 8 through 10 also. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. Hallelujah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the application of his holy word. So as you can see, we not only died according to the testimony of the Holy Spirit, we not only died uh, with Christ, but we were buried with him. As he says in verse number 4, he says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into his death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So therefore we was raised with Jesus Christ. You see, so we died with him when he was nailed to the cross. We were buried with him, which proves that we're really dead. And, and through the baptism into his death, just as so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, and he's been risen from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too are permitted to live a new life. See, we live now by that resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. And finally, I want you to turn with me over to Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 9. We're going to read 9 through 11, okay? 9 through 11, and this is Romans chapter number 8, the testimony of the Holy Spirit as he wrote it in Romans chapter 8, verse 9 through 11. Okay, let's begin. The Holy Spirit says, You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal body through his spirit who lives in you. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the application of his holy word. So this is the spirit that we are called to be led by. And, 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 and so the title of this message is be led by the Holy Spirit. And if you are controlled by the Spirit, then it's because you have the Spirit of Christ in you. See, God put that Spirit in you when you gave your life over to Jesus. When you give your life over to Jesus, that's what God says He does. And He gives you that evidence in, um, in John chapter 1, verses 11 through 13. And if you haven't given your life over to Jesus, then God is merciful and he has been merciful to you and he has poured his spirit out on you as well. But that doesn't mean that you have the spirit in you. You have to have God has to be the one to put the spirit in you. And when he does that, then you have it. But only when he does that. He does that when you give your life over to Jesus. Now, if you have never given your life over to Jesus, now is the day of salvation because God said it best. He said, now is the acceptable time. The day of salvation is today. So you have opportunity now to give your life over to Jesus because all we need to do is to pray a sinner's prayer in which I would give you the words to say and you just repeat it after me. And if you mean it in your heart, God will see that you mean it in your heart and he will make you a born again believer 
at that particular time and I'll give you the word of God in, in, um, that the Holy Spirit testifies about in John uh, once we've completed that prayer. But also now if you have given your life over to Jesus at one time or another, but you took it back, you know, some people call it backsliding or whatever they have to explain that they're no longer serving the Lord. Uh, well, you need to come back. God wants you back and he's not uh, hostile to you coming back. He wants you to come back, but you come back the same way you came at first. Give your life over to Jesus, but you be rededicating your life over to Jesus. So if anyone falling under the hearing of my voice and you want to give your life over to Jesus, uh, either for the first time or through rededication, then just bow your hearts with me and pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear God in heaven, I am a sinner and I come to you believing that you will forgive me of my sins through Jesus Christ. I confess that Jesus is Lord and I believe Jesus is alive, risen from the dead by the glory and the power of God. I surrender myself to you, Jesus, and I ask you to come by the Holy Spirit and live your life on earth through me. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Thank you for your tender mercies. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, to God be the glory. If you prayed that prayer with me, you are now in the house. And Jesus said it best. He said, the angels in heaven are rejoicing because you are one sinner who has repented. So be encouraged today because the good news about your repentance is that God got your back. And he always, always wanted to, to give you that blessed assurance. And that's why he's been merciful to you all this time. Even though you had not dedicated yourself to the cause, you had not really agreed with God, but he's been merciful to you all along. And then what he was doing was he was inviting you to come and taste what is good yeah you you can see how good god can be because he's been merciful to you even though you're still dead in your sins and trespasses but now that you're no longer he's taking you out and now he's made you a part of his family and so you be encouraged to grow in the family but grow in the knowledge of the truth because god not only wants people saved but he wants people to come to the knowledge of the truth I get that evidence from the Holy Spirit who recorded it in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 4, I believe it is, where it is written that the Spirit says, For God will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is, there is only one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. So you be encouraged today. And if you have given your life over to Jesus or re rededicated your life over to Jesus, well, you already have been born again, but now you've been washed again. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And so you be encouraged also. But I'm going to give you the evidence in John chapter number 1 and verses 11 through 13. That's the evidence that proves that if you pray this prayer with me today, and you meant it in your heart, God made you one of those that is now born again. And Jesus said, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. That means that you have been qualified by God to see the kingdom of God. So you be encouraged. And if the Lord is willing, I'll talk to you again at another time. Hallelujah. Amen. Joy overflows my heart. I will sing a new song to the Lord. Joy overflows my heart. I will sing a new song to the Lord. I will praise the Lord. I
Ah! Uh-huh. 